Okay, so in case you're unaware, Atlas is doing this collaboration with this fragrance company based out in Japan called Prime Maniacs to produce colognes and perfumes of the main cast of Persona 3. Now, I first discovered this information when I was exploring the Mega Ten Wiki and I noticed the poll at the bottom. So, uh, this information's actually been out there for about a month or two. I'm not sure if anyone else has talked about it or anything, but I know this is the first I've heard about it, so there has to be some people out there who don't know about this. So, I figured I'd take the time to talk about some of these and uh, give my honest opinions on how Atlas accurate these perfumes are to the characters. By now, I'm sure some of you guys know me, I'm gonna take this like super serious and not make any jokes at all whatsoever. But first, let's take a look at the polls and see who scored the highest to who scored the lowest. Alright, now the poll's question is which scent will be your top choice, and as expected, P3MC has the highest amount of votes, 71 people voted for him. Next we have Yukari, with only 17 people voted, Fruity Flora Bouquet. Next we have Junpei with his bitter fresh note. He only scored 19. Next we have Mitsuru with 31, which is I think the third highest here, with her elegant floral bouquet. Next we have Akihiko with a surprisingly low amount of 17. I thought he would definitely beat Junpei, but uh, nope, doesn't look like it. Fuga with her tender floral bouquet, only 11, which I think is the second lowest here. Next we have Aegis with a surprisingly high amount of support, 26 which would make her the 4th highest with her purely floral bouquet. Uh, well, and the lowest one we have is Ken with his orange musky note. Only 4 people voted for his. And 2nd highest we have Shinjiro, which really isn't too surprising. I mean, Shinji loses badassery. If I had a choice, I would definitely want to smell like him the most. But with that out of the way now, let's go to the Prime Maniacs website and see how accurate these perfumes are by reading the descriptions. I should also mention before we start that I don't really have my hands on any of these perfumes. So I can't really test them out and really give you an accurate description of what they really smell like. These perfumes don't come out until October 26th, but you can pre-order them on the Prime Maniacs website. Uh, unfortunately, they don't seem to have any plans so far to release these perfumes internationally. So we might be out of luck unless a third party website decides to start distributing them or whatever. But uh, until then, I guess we'll just have to go with these descriptions. Alright, so let's read the Persona 3 MC's description first and see what's going on with him. But uh, do note that I am using Google Translate to translate this page because PrimeManiacs.com is a Japanese website and most of the text was in Japanese. So the translation of what I'm reading may not exactly be accurate or make, well, any sense at all whatsoever. Just to keep in mind, as fresh light shines on the surface of the water, a fresh and fresh indication smells intensely. It is a sweet clarity that makes me feel somewhere even young. However, in the depths, mysterious calmness is quietly hidden, a scent with no cloudiness. Praise the clear and calming quietness. Okay, that was a pretty good description of him. Okay, so the top of this perfume is lime and bergamot. Uh, I hope I said that right. This is the first time I ever encountered the word bergamot. I'm not sure what that is. Middle is jasmine, rose, lavender, raspberry, and marine. Okay, all fitting, fitting. I think I'm getting a, a little hint of what this is actually smelling like. And last is musk, amber, and sandalwood. Wow, okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure they use sandalwood to make doors now, don't they? Alright, next is Yukari, and real quick, I just want to stop to appreciate the box art. is actually the original artwork of Persona 3 all touched up with the full moon in the background, so that's nice. So Yukari's fragrance is, is a squirrel tube rose, is scented in brightness, without carefree, spreading extensively. Praise the dignified air, and the flowers are blooming. The refreshing signs drift with the elegance that feels the strength of the core. A fragrance with a pure sweetness that bounces on natural loveliness. Okay, so uh, two things wrong with that description. Uh, pure sweetness and natural loveliness describing Yukari may actually be wrong. Okay, so the top is green apple, lychee, and raspberry. Middle is coriander, tube rose, uh, hyacinth, muguet, I'm pretty sure that's French for something, and cyclamen. And last is musk, amber, white cedar, and sandalwood. More wood for that door. Alright, next is Junpei, and I gotta be honest, when I thought of Junpei, I couldn't help but like think that this has to be like the worst smell, but let's just read. Youthful signs that the green citrus with a light chisel rises exhilaratingly. 
The strength and dynamism spread with somewhere with bitterness. Light strikes straight as if pushing its back. A refreshing and bright scent for a boy who is troubled but heads forward. Wow, that's a, that's a pretty accurate description. As accurate as it could be with Google translating it all. Okay, so the top is lemon, bergamot, mandarin, okay, wormwood. Middle is geranium, narcissus, okay, neroli, muget, cyclamen. Last is woody, amber, sandalwood, and musk. Eh, don't have much to say about this one, I guess. Okay, next we have Best Girls Fragrance. The fragrance of bright and luscious rose plays a sense of spectacular, airy dignity full of elegance. Behind the sharp gaze that feels the grown-up atmosphere, it keeps its expansive purity and spreads dazzlingly high. It is a noble and beautiful scent wrapped in a fluffy beauty. The luscious scent of execution. What a laughable effort. So the top of hers is lemon bergamot, again. Middle is jasmine rose muguet, yang, yang lang, <laughs> I'm not sure how to pronounce that, I'm gonna call it lang lang, lily lilac. Last is musk, powderic, amber, and vanilla. Best girl sounds like she's smelling the best already. Okay, so Akihiko's is a sharp and dignified signature brought about by the sharpness of herbs going through. When a natural tenderness and a youthfulness that is natural and vigorous, velvety, <laughs> get it, velvet, are mixed with a neat scent without any turbidity. A dedicated and honest air flows, a rustic refreshing rises, a scent full of cleanliness. Cleanliness, cleanliness, same thing. Alright, the top of his is lime, mandarin, buchu, and apple. The middle is armoise. I hope I said that right. A lot of these I haven't heard of, so these aren't really words I use too often, but uh, I'm pronouncing the best I can. Peppermint, geranium, neroli, fresia, freesia, freesia, uh -huh, freesia, rose, and last is cedarwood, sandalwood, musk, Oak moss, jasmine, and muguet. Uh, is that it? Yeah, protein should have definitely been worked in there somewhere. Good call. Alright, next is Fucus. Sweetness that makes you remember the soap softly closes quietly and innocently when the brightness increases from a low keyed and calm loveliness to it gradually blossoms. It is surrounded by clear and clear light. Wait, wait. It is surrounded by clear and clear light. Alright, I'm, I'm gonna chalk that up to Google Translation. And a graceful smell that is grasped by graceful and soft signs. Okay, fitting, fitting, fitting. The top is lemon, cardamom, mandarin, middle is rose, geranium, neroli, and last is muguet, sandalwood, musk, and jasmine. And the next is Igus. I can't, I can't imagine to what a robot smells like, but hey, they captured it here, I guess. It's a floret dancing with a light wind, our pretty fragrance drifts. Clear signs with unwavering strength gradually increase soft sweetness and wrap around softness and kindness. A scent hidden innocent warmth behind a straight and straight line of sight. Okay. Oh, straight line of sight, alright. The top of hers is lemon. Okay, I, I guess I could picture I guess smelling like lemon a little bit. Alright, uh, lemon, bergamot, lime, middle is jasmine, muguet, lily, raspberry, rose, geranium, and the last is musk, amber, woody, and peach. Okay, so next we have Ken, the lowest on the pole. Uh, I can't wait for them to capture the scent of prepubescence and innocence, unless you're on the female route, in which case innocence is thrown right out the window. Rare sharpness occasionally mixes in a young impression that soft brightness brings. The fragrance which somewhat stands on the dangerous balance gradually changes to a natural appearance and it gradually increases the transparency. Behind the inevitability and purity, a scent with an adult expression. Okay. Top, bergamot and orange. Middle is jasmine, marae note, rose, hyacinth, and last is muguet. Amber, musk, and cedarwood. Oh, last but certainly not least, we have Shinjiro's. Tranquility like feeling lonely, rough intimidation mixed with each other. 
with its cool signature and wild atmosphere, its fragrance gradually warms while gradually wearing a faint stimulus. While roughing, it smells a somewhat stoic impression. And wow, uh, wow, ginger ale looks like it has the most ingredients put into it. Uh, the top is bergamot, lime, mandarin, lemon, orange, galbanum, galbanum. Middle is geranium, peppermint, neroli, nutmeg, that's new, lavender, and last is sandalwood, musk, amber, jasmine, oak moss, and vetiver. Well, this isn't right. There's something definitely missing from this one. Where's the gunpowder at? Joking aside, I think Shinjiro's is the one I'd most want to try, because I've heard from other people that it's simply to die for. Alright, next is Koromaru. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Koromaru doesn't have a fragrance because I don't think anyone wants to smell like dog. Though, if I had to be honest, I think Koromaru would probably be the best smelling dog in the world. It's it's best not to market <laughs> dog cologne to people. And really, that's all of them. So really, all of these sound like they smell pretty good. It's just a shame that I probably won't be able to sample any of these for myself since they don't really plan on shipping these internationally. But, uh, who knows? Maybe if this collaboration goes over well, we'll see some over here. Or better yet, we'll see some over here with some more Persona characters. Persona 4, Persona 5. You know, I would love to go out smelling like you. Come out smelling like a total Chad all the time. Uh, I doubt we'll see Teddy or Morgana since, uh, just like Koromaru, I don't think we want to go out smelling like, you know, bears and cats. But, whatever they decide to do, I'll be alright with it. But I do suppose this is the end of our little excursion into probably one of the many collaboration Atlas does with Persona. Like, seriously, Atlas does a lot of collaborations when it comes to Persona. Uh, this probably isn't even one of the weirdest ones, but man, this one is, is kind of out there. And I am interested, and it really didn't seem like many people knew about this. I, I've seen one or two articles, but so far I haven't seen really anyone talk about this too much. And I, I just felt like it was something worth talking about, you know? I mean, going out spelling like your favorite Persona 3 characters. That's that that's something special right there. So, uh, if I was able to inform you, kudos. If I wasn't, you already knew this, well, yeah. But anyway, I'll see you guys later for whatever weird project I have next. See ya. I've chosen Persona Change. This one. Orpheus! What a stylish power. Um... Orpheus Piccaro! <laughs> that was easier than I thought. This group works. Stay in formation. No changes.